Well, it was Los Angeles. I almost got robbed last night, by the way. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. We were here for we were here for family and to be on this and uh, went out with some friends last night on, on Third Street for dinner. And uh, it's, you know, not a bad area. No. At like 10, 1030 at night, we get out of the restaurant. I have security, obviously. So we start heading one way. My friends head the other as a husband and wife. They go like, you know, three cars down. They get in their car. As soon as they get in their car, a white Hyundai pulls up. Ben Shapiro recently joined Bill Maher on his podcast, and things quickly heated up as Ben challenged Bill's usual talking points. It's become a bit of a trend when Bill Maher has guests like Ben Shapiro on his show. There's always a lively back and forth. In this particular clip, Ben dives into the topic of crime in Los Angeles and California, comparing it to states like Florida, where he believes things are managed differently. Let's check out this moment between Bill Maher and Ben Shapiro as they debate crime, safety, and policy. It's definitely one of the best parts of the podcast. And uh, three black gentlemen, I mentioned the race because they are still at large, jump out of the car, they immediately grab my friend, pull him out of his car, steal his wallet, steal his watch, uh, pull, pull his keys out of his pocket, his phone. They run around to his wife. They grab her, start trying to rip the jewelry off of her. Uh, she screams. And at this point, their time has elapsed. They jump back in the car and they take off. And I remembered why I moved to Florida. So, well, it's not like that couldn't happen in Florida. Well, I mean, we'd shoot you. <laughs> um, well, are you strapped? Uh, in Florida, sure. You are? So is my wife. Everybody's strapped in Florida. Come on, man. I've been there. Okay, well, what I take from this is don't eat on 3rd Street anymore. <laughs> <laughs> There's some fine restaurants on 3rd Street. I mean, Berries. I love Berries. It's late night. I, uh, it's a very strange restaurant because it's nice. Nobody's ever in it. If you want to, like, be sure to get a table at 9 o'clock, just walk off the street. I recommend it highly. I think they must be laundering money or something. Uh, Jones is a old, uh, isn't the, the little door on 3rd? These are all, like, places I will never go again. <laughs> yeah, no, I listen. I grew up here, man. I mean, well, I spent my entire childhood here. I was here. I was here. If you're enjoying this content, please hit the like button. It really helps me out a lot. Now, let's jump back into the video. For... Of the 36 years before we moved to Florida, I was here for 33 of them here. And uh, then there came a point where we were out. Well, I mean, you're, you're not unique, certainly. There's lots of people who have knew. The, the places people have move are Florida, Nashville, and Austin. Yep. Right. Those are the three sort of like <laughs> haves for people who have had wokeness up to here. And when I say wokeness, you know, I mean, it's a triggering word because... Some people think of it in the original meaning, which is, as I always say, noble, alert to injustice. Certainly with our despicable racial history, that was necessary uh, to be super alert and vigilant. Then it migrated because words do. That's just the nature of language. You can't control it. Words just become something else. And it became a sort of catch-all for what I have called the aggressively anti-common sense yeah. agenda. I mean, that's where we share a belief. Then there's lots of stuff where we don't. And sure. I, you know, we don't even have to talk about Trump. Um, but, you know, it is like uh, 10 days before an election and we're about to elect yeah. like the, worst, a moral obligation, yeah. the worst person ever. Uh, was On Bill Maher's podcast, Ben Shapiro shared his personal experiences with crime in Los Angeles, which kicked off an intense discussion about crime rates and the different ways states handle public safety. Shapiro argued that major cities like Los Angeles and San Francisco are struggling with crime partly because of their policies, which he believes allow criminals to get away with more. He highlighted how states like Florida, with more lenient gun laws, tend to see less crime because people feel empowered to defend themselves, which he says acts as a natural deterrent. Marr, however, seemed skeptical, questioning if Florida's approach is really the solution or if it's just a different way of handling the issue. He pointed out that crime can happen anywhere and that relying on looser gun laws may not address the root problems. The dictator and, and will I mean, change America for the worse forever. But you know what? Between friends, little things like that can go. <laughs> but we agree on the uh, aggressively anti-common sense agenda. And, you know, common sense certainly is you know, job one, make the citizens feel safe. Well, that, that's the thing, right? I turned to my friend after he got robbed and we were calling the cops and waiting 15 minutes for the cops to arrive. And, uh, and I said to him, well, you know, at least you've done your part to alleviate systemic racism in the United States. <laughs> and that, that's, you know, that, that, that's sort of the mentality. I'm moving out of here for a while. And again, he and his family live here. It's, it's, 
bad governance is a thing that ought not be countenanced regardless of, of your politics. I mean, people right. would like to live in a place where you can walk down the street at 1030 at night and not be robbed by roving gangs. And that, that doesn't seem particularly controversial. But the fact that it right. is, I, I think, you know, again, we don't have to get into the Trump of it. But I think one of the reasons why people are less concerned about things that people like Trump say is because like, OK, the issues that matter to me are things like, is my grocery bill twice what it was three years ago? Am I getting robbed on the street? And so the disconnect between the legacy media, which is very concerned about things like systemic racism and the normal person who's like, I would just like to not get robbed today, that that drives an enormous amount of distrust in legacy media. So when they start warning about, you know, Donald Trump saying X, Y or Z, it's like, OK, well, he's saying that. And you know what? You know, like I, what, what I really care about is who's going to fix my life and make it better. And I, I think that really is a big divide right now. Yeah, the piece I'm doing at the end of the show Friday, and I guess this will air after that, so I don't have to worry that I'm cheating myself. But it's, uh, you know, it ends with saying that the Democrats, when they ran against Trump, certainly in 2020 and this year, really their big argument is, um, let's get back to normal. Certainly that was Biden's. Is And, and you know, I don't have to love everything, and I don't, but... Certainly, it's not a hard choice for me. But if you're if what you're selling is let's get back to normal, be normal. On Bill Maher's podcast, Ben Shapiro and Bill Maher delved into an interesting discussion about crime rates, focusing on the challenges faced by cities like Los Angeles and San Francisco compared to states like Florida. Shapiro shared his perspective, suggesting that cities with stricter gun laws might actually see higher crime rates because law-abiding citizens have fewer means to protect themselves, while criminals don't necessarily follow those restrictions. He pointed out that in places like Florida, where gun ownership is more common, there's a sense of deterrence because people feel empowered to defend themselves. Bill Maher, on the other hand, questioned whether more guns are really the answer to reducing crime, hinting that the problem might be more complex than just access to firearms. Marr seemed to challenge the idea that policies alone are responsible for crime rates and encouraged looking at a broader range of factors, possibly including social and economic influences. Their exchange wasn't heated, but it certainly highlighted two very different approaches to understanding and addressing crime. Shapiro's view is more about personal responsibility and empowerment, while Marr seemed more cautious, advocating for a balanced approach. What do you think? Are stricter laws or personal empowerment more effective in tackling crime? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you enjoy content like this, please like and subscribe. See you in the next video.